Yes, sir. Yes, sir. is a localized injury to the skin and underlying tissue, usually over the bony prominence as a result of pressure or pressure with combination of shear. This is just to introduction to the students. A continuous pressure leads to initial ischemia and subsequently necrosis of the affected area. The pressure ulcers of ischial, sacral, and prophetic region are the most common pressure source. The pressure source occurs in a bedridden patient, wheelchair bound patient, due to inability to actively change the position, exposing the patient to the several recurrences even after surgery. In addition, the general condition of the patient, often with the poor nutrition and local and systemic infections, as everyone knows, they may be treated by rotation flap, gluteus maximus flap, DY advancement, limbus flap, or perforator base flap. Today, I am going to talk only on limbus flap. So introduction to the limbus flap. The limbus flap, because of its versatility of design, simplicity of surgical execution, continues to be the choice of treatment in sacral pressure for at least for me. The limbus flap has been used for the defect of different size, shape, orientation, and eccentricity. Professor Alexander A. Limbal of Leningrad devoted his life for this flap design. From anatomy of the limbal flap, the limbal flap drives the blood supply from the subdermal plexus and its random pattern supply permits the flap layout in any configuration. The random pattern, pattern flap can be raised from any one of or all the corners of the rhomboid. This flap provides effect with a tissue of good thickness, color, and good bath flap. Flat dimension and design. The geometric principle on which the flat is based is an equilateral parallelogram found as rhombus. The defect is modified to a rhombus with the internal angles of 60 to 120 degrees. 60 and 120. Two of them are 60, two of them are 120. All the sides are defect are equal in length, which are in turn equal to the short diagonal of the device. Students should remember this. Whenever they are asked in the exam to draw, they should draw the short diagonal. The line of the short diagonal defect is extended to a length which equals to its bisecting one of the external angles of 120 degrees. Okay. The second side of the flat is designed by marking a second line of same length as the first parallel to the adjacent side of the rhombic defect, creating 60 degree angle at the flat apex. The design flap is equal to the size of the defect. Four possible rhombic flaps can be designed in any rhombic defect. Following the transfer of the limbal flap, the greatest boom tension is at the flat donor. Now, look at this graphic where X is the vertical diameter. That is height. W is the transverse diameter, that is width, and X is 9 to 12. Why 9 to 12? Because it is 9 to 12 centimeter defect can be closed primarily depending, it can be done with a single flap, depending on the laxity of the skin. Uh, of the skin. Single limbo flap can be planted in the pressure source where H and W is less than X. For the larger defect, two opposite flaps can be used as a double limber. And the third limber can be flat if X and W both are more than X. So just remember this, X is 9 to 12 centimeter where a single flap can be done. X is height and W is weight. It ranges from 9 to 10 depending on the of the skin, and as I told you, it is all the relation of X to W and to X. So, clinical cases. Case one. This is 9 to 12. A limbo press is planned. This is immediate post stop and late post stop. Again, case two, where a single limbo crab is designed. You can see immediate and late post stop. Double limbo crab. Now, double limbo crab also has two dimensions. In one where W is more and in another where X is more. 
Now, how we talk when the W is more? When the transverse diameter of the defect is more than X, that is 9 to 12 centimeters, and X is less than 9 to 12 centimeters. So, height is less, width is more. When you suture, they come end to end suturing of the flap, so I have named it as skipping flap. Now, there is another situation where W is less than X, that is, the width is less than 9 to 12 centimeters, but the height is more. In this case, they just are side to side, so I have named them as overlapping flap. These are some of the examples. You can see the overlapping of the flap. Not uh, the flap are not suited end to end as in width because the height is more. Now there is another situation where there are eccentric extensions of the defect. Uh, suture line is not in uh, the defect is not in midline. The x. Now this you will understand only in the graphics, which is in the next slide. See, x plus x2 may be more than h. x3 plus x4 may be more than w. But individually, x1, x2, x3, x4 are less than h and w. But this is eccentric. So you have to do double plan. Like this. You have to convert it into two defects, not a single defect. See, I have converted it into two defects, two different defects, and uh, single flap for each defect. So practically two defects. Two uh, flaps. Double linear flap for the again for eccentric, again divided into two. Again an eccentric defect case four where it has been done as a two different defects. Now, you can also do innovations. One of my patients, I did not want to make it rhombi, so I just uh, did the flap and see how it comes. You can always customize as per the need using the same principles. This is the late post up of a rhomboid flap, not into the rhomboid defect, but using the skin without discarding it. Now, triple length of flap again when the width is more than 9 to 12, height is also more than 9 to 12, the two flaps are not enough because these flaps are length and breadth is equal. So these two flaps are not enough as it is more than 9 to 12. So a third flap has been designed and three flaps have been done. It is a bit tricky where the third flap gets to church, there is always a chance of breakdown, but this is the option. Most operative care of all these flaps uh, is just like any other flap performed for pressure soon. Although morbidity is minimal, positional and nursing care requires prolonged stay. Hospital discharge only on 17 to 21 days. Now, uh, what I find as an advantage of limber flap is the geometric flap, less tissue loss, less dissection, easy nursing, because there are no lateral extensions, extensions of the incision. Diagonally opposite limber flap is always available as a backup flap. By doing the flap, we are not geopiatizing the other limber flap, which can be raised from the other two sides. Complications. Uh, one of the complications is standing, standing cones and widening scars, but in the paraplegic patients. It doesn't matter, standing cones are created in the individual with them and thick skin. Sometimes there is a miscalculation in the flap design, depending on the uh, miscalculation of the laxity. Hence, we have to, may have to put a graph. This is a case where I miscalculated it, and uh, the suturing was again under tension. So, one of the flap donors was covered with skin graft. But anyhow, it worked because the skin graft was not on the pressure area. So, limbus flap has been described for the coverage of sacral pressure source and mobilization of single limbus flap for a larger defect may be difficult, but since another option of two limbus. We have used two limbus diagonally opposite to cover such defects. 
basic principles of pressure ulcer surgery are complete excision, osteotomy for offending bone point reconstruction, and permit the preserve extension of the backup plan. The scar result is highly predictable. So we know where we are going to put the scar. Wide excision and limbal slap is an effective technique in the treatment of sacral pressure sores. Comparing to the limbus, to so the traditional techniques, there are no doubt here, better option for eccentric sacral sores, and when on one side of the skin is not available. The flap may be made as per the convenience based on the defect, as I showed you, without making the wrong point. The flap coverage technique is done in any type of sacral pressure sores. It is mastered easily and provides an effective procedure for sacral pressure sores and no complications associated with it. Thank you. Any questions from the students? Any questions? Can you hear me? There are no questions in chat, sir. You can uh, continue with your no. second uh, lecture. Now, uh, many. Uh, CABG is a coronary artery bypass graft is a very common procedure and secondary sternal defects uh, are one of the devastating complications in which uh, um, they, are, they come late and they are most neglected. Sternal wound infection with osteomyelitis is frequent. It is documented 1 to 5 percent potentially devastating complications. The complication is associated with amplified cause, prolonged hospital, and significant morbidity, morbidity with mortality rates up to and more than 50 percent have been reported. So reasons of bone variations in the post CABG, use of internal memory artery, uh, they use Lima, left internal memory artery. Uh, this is not for bypass, but it is for revascularization of the heart to decrease this decreases the vascularity of the postural cartilage on the left side. Diabetes mellitus usually common with these patients. Use of wire to foreign body close to the sternum. Failure to obliterate or adequately decontaminate dead space. These are the reasons of boom diagnosis. These are usually referred late because of uh, cardiovascular surgeons go on debriding incompletely. They want to retain the sternal wire, wire and they go on surgery. Pre surgical management is liver control, culture specific antibiotics, and wound swell. Now, the students have seen the factor with major muscle flap used for the oral malignancies. Today, I am going to show them a different use of that major muscle flap. Which is a type 5 mathe and my plan with the upper bottle dental and dental, and lower bottle as rectus abdominis and external rock. Two origins, clavicular and external, and deep to it are sectoris minor, selector central, and intercostal muscles. Insertion in the lateral lip of the bisectical groove of the humerus. Blood supply from medial and lateral sectoral now, very important is blood supply for us. Dominant major cervical from thoracoid chromial artery and perforating branch of the internal memory artery is the minor cervical. We should remember that internal memory artery is used for revascularization of the heart. So you have to ask them whether they have normally they use left internal memory artery, whether they have used lima or lima. And if the patient has come directly to you, just get an x ray test done. You will see the clips which are used by the cardiovascular surgeon. The side with the clips are there. Uh, that side, internal and memory artery has been used. As you know, internal memory artery is the branch of the first part of the subclavian artery. It runs behind the six ribs, close to the lateral border of the skin, and has perforating branches through the intercostal space. These perforation branches also become the basis for delta petrol as well as petrol major petrol is major flap based on minor steady. So coming to the arc of rotation of uh, the back major, 
with the origin and insertion divided based on the major muscular pedicle, the unit is as a useful arc of rotation as a muscle or myotendinous plant. Here we use only muscle plant. It is easily advanced to cover the entire sternum extent to the costochondral cartilage on the opposite side. If only the sternum is covered, the division of the origin and elevation of the muscle is all that is required. So it can be used as an advancement flap or a transposition flap. If major pedicle is tight and the pectoralis major muscle flap can be raised in turn or itself to cover the middle part of the sternum based on the minor pedicle from the perforators of internal memory artery. Ironically, more you do the deployment, easier is the flap to raise, which I have seen practically. Now, these are the defects. These are the defects. The upper one, sir, where you can do an advancement of the flap based on the major pedicle. Middle one, sir, defect. You can turn over the muscle, actual is major, on the internal, on the perforating branches of the internal memory artery which has not been used for revascularization. This is very important. This is the turnover flap where you tie the major pedicle and on the minor, minor pedicle you can turn over to cover the middle third of the defense, middle uh, part of the sternal defense. Lower part is the most difficult thing to cover and I have developed that in adipose facial flap, the fascia covering the rectus abdominis muscle can be raised as and turn around based on the internal memory artery, which has not been used normally from the right side. So left be used. So uh, this is turnover factor is major flap, this adipofacial flap. So I have shown it on the right side only because Lima normally used. For the defect involving entire you can use all the three flaps from the left side on the major pedicle from the right side. If the lima is used from the left side, you can definitely use on the major pedicle on the right side. You can use on internal memory, actually, is major turnover and adipopression both. These are some of the cases after debridement, you can see. This is advancement flap from the left side. Normally the advancement flap is from the left side because we are using the major pedicle. We are not worried about the minor pedicle. And most of the time the defect is on slightly extensive to the left side because they have used Lima. This is another place. Here, uh, both the sides spectral major muscle flap was done on the major pedicle because that suited the defect well. Another case, you see right side turn over flap has been done. You can see that uh, the major pedicle has been tied. For tying the major pedicle, some people put an incision in the axilla or you can use a diverse retractor and mixture, a 90 degree long artery. Uh, to tie the pedicle and then you can cut the muscle from there and just just near the pedicle you turn over near the minor pedicle this is the right sided turn over you can see how beautiful the muscle looks over the different and you can suture there is another case HRCT is a must in all the cases to know how much defragment has to be done. There is an erosion of the sternum, right side turnover flap. Then there are the all, see these are the instruments uh, which are used to, uh, to tie the major pedicle because if it is not tied properly, it can lead to catastrophic. So it has to be transfixed in fact, not tied. Another case, the blue arrow shows the post-sternal fluid connection, intraoperative debridement, 
right turnover flap again. Whenever it is turnover, it is right side because left internal memory normally they use. After suturing the muscle flap and two weeks after the surgery. Again, another case intraoperative view of the debridement. See how much debridement has been done in the kidney tree. Left side advancement flap. Whenever we do advancement, we prefer left side because internal memory is severe. So, major pedicle is not a problem on left side. And the defect is more towards the left side, so it is easier to cover. Again, that was not enough, so the right side turnover flap was also done. You can see left side advance and right side turnover. They are sutured for a tension free closure of the muscle flap in the defect. Again, post off. It's another case. See the amount of debridement. So much was the infection that all this had to be removed. Again, right turnover, left advancement to cover. You can see the drain in C2. Again, another case where all the three flaps you can see, I have marked them. Left advancement, right turnover, and right adipofacial because right internal memory was intact. So turnover and adipofacial, we had no choice but to do it from the right side. And left side advancement was done because there was the defect was bigger. Another thing, after debridement, Again, right turnover, left advancement, and right adipofacial. This adipofacial is the intercrossing part of the rectus abdominis in which it is medially based and superiorly and laterally the fascia is cut and it is turned around. After debridement, the amount of debridement. Well, this I have not done, one of my colleagues has done. He has advanced the major biopedicinous slab with STG with tension band wiring, tension suturing. So, uh, this is also a technique where you can, you do not have to separate skin flaps and muscle. You advance the muscle flap along with the skin, and the secondary defect is closed with the skin graft. This is done where the skin is also not good, where the skin is also lacking. In most of the cases, we do not like the skin. So we do only muscle. This is after uh, three weeks after surgery, you can see the result. Why are muscle flaps introduced better vascularized soft tissue, improved ability to reduce the bacterial count and even in case? See, this is very important. If the wound breaks down, the muscle is exposed, it can be managed easily instead of media system being exposed. Other plants which are used as vector septomy, momentum, lettuce must go and free plants, but I have no experience. I am very happy managing them with pack major, either with turnover or with advancement. This is a very tricky problem because patient thing is this AI progenic cardiothoracic surgeon born 100 percent risk result in spite of his four or five times failure. Patients are in anticoagulants which may have stopped depending on the CABG graph condition. And most of the patients have multiple problems, at least diabetes, they have. So all these problems in treating these patients. Complications, skin necrosis, can conservatively managed because there was underlying muscle. Hematoma, which required evacuation in one patient, maybe uh, the turnover flap, uh, major medical may, might have bled. Who dies or recurrence of infection not seen in any patient in six months follow. Awareness amongst the cardiothoracic surgeons that an early intervention of covering in muscle flaps would yield better results rather than repeated attempts to close up is a must. So, cardiothoracic surgeons should be aware. Now, another problem with cardiologists, not with cardiothoracic surgeons, is covering the exposed pacemaker. Sometimes, with the pacemaker comes with the exposure as late as seven years. Because after seven years, the skin becomes thick, thin. Cardiologists used to remove the pacemaker and put a new one on the right side. It's a difficult procedure and cost involved me, prompted me to cover that. 
it is very costly. The pacemaker cost from two to twenty lakhs a day. So I have been, uh, just it's an innovative idea to cover it with a muscle flap to make a, just like a sandwich. Cardiac pacemakers, defibrillators, cardiac resynchronizing therapies are very common in this area. These devices are susceptible to erosion, exposure, or infection, and plastic surgeon consulted when salvage is required. Some pectoral position, bilateral repositioning approach, or anterior muscle splitting approach, and intra pectoral positioning and safe location of the device has been developed, but cardiologists they are very happy putting it subcutaneously. While these devices have undergone vast improvement in terms of design, size, none of, none of less they are modern body. They are susceptible to complications including exposure, pain, alternability, infection. Traditionally, almost all device implanters prefer subcutaneous site of implantation. I told you because they are non-surgical people, it is easier for them to play subcutaneous. Because as soon as the potential on the muscle, it starts bleeding and they don't know what to do. Many a time I have been called intra procedure to control the brain. And the approach is well formulated. Uh, it may not be appropriate for especially very thin built patients where erosion is very common. The reported incidence of infection in the state of heart center ranges from 2 to nearly 20%. The development of sophisticated medical technologies has led to increased life expectancy in developed as well as developing countries. This has led to many patients being treated by implantable devices. One more than a million patients receive these devices at least. The type of complication requires either complete or partial removal or replantation of the device on the opposite side. And often removal of the associated leaks. In this situation, the device site local complication removal of the device is not feasible, as removal can lead to other complications such as venous, valvular, AV injury, temporary, and sudden cardiac death. When previously most of the cardiac oil we used to remove and put it on the opposite side, but now they have started calling me to salvage. So, in the surgical techniques, under general anesthesia, with CR fluoroscopic backup, incision was kept on the previous car. I, I'll tell you one thing this, all these implants have to be put on the separate mode when you are operating because if you are using portrait, it can cause to cardiac arrhythmia. Incision was kept on the previous car and extended medially up to the lateral border of the sternum. The branding of the pocket was performed and taking care not to damage any lid. Very important because that pocket is so congested with all the lids and battery and everything, you have to take care not to damage anything. The first surgery is taken and the capsule is opened. Now the skin flaps are elevated medially to the lateral border of the sternum and this. Literally distilled to the implant up to the lateral border of the pectoralis major from the same incision. Uh, the incision of the uh, implant, the scar of the implant where it is exposed, going downwards, parallel to the sternum, and slightly laterally at the skin flap is this. Superior dissection is continued up to clavicle and inferiorly is done so that the adequate pectoralis major muscle flap should be elevated to cover. On elevation of the skin flap, the muscle is exposed. And which is separated from sternocostal origin from the anterior surface of the postal cartilage, so that on its major pedicle it can be turned. After its major muscle flap was turned over and sutured, such that the pacemaker is sandwiched between the muscle. Inferiorly, there is the muscle, superiorly, you are putting the muscle, so it is sandwiched, and the inferior border of the flap reaches to the clavicle, so as to provide a healthy cover from below with the previously this. Infected, infected capsule. Obviously, a drain is moved, put, and meticulous closure is done. Both is closed in layers, and incision is pressed. You can see a pacemaker which is exposed, and uh, there is a single slide, so you can see how the muscle is used to cover, and the skin sutures are taken. 
without disturbing the pacemaker. Again, another case where the muscle is dissected, same way which I have told. It is same way. Here it is better demonstrated where the muscle is raised and you can see the incision. Again, the muscle is raised. Subsectoral or intrasectoral positioning of the cardiac device by various techniques is a well known concept. Outcome of primary subsectoral placement versus subcutaneous placement is not significantly different for mechanical devices related complications. This is documented. So, wherever you put the complication can occur. So, even in the modern era, routine approach is to place these in the subcutaneous place for procedural simplicity because they are non surgical people, they want to put it on their own. Device exploitation may not be feasible at many times as most of the devices are placed from left in and remain location approach for the future revision also. Healing of the implantation, see, uh, whenever you remove the implant, the healing takes time and it involves mortality and morbidity. For this reason, the salvage repositioning of these infected exposed cardiac devices becomes imperative in management of the debilitating rhythm disorder. Limited data published on the techniques used on device service available. While working on the device only bipolar pottery is used, electromagnetic interference occurs in cutting pottery and not with the coagulation mode. And unipolar pottery is used, the pacemaker has to be asynchronized on these modes, VVO or VVI mode. Several authors have independently reported the outcomes with the treatment of infected device pockets by revision and placement with continuous irrigation. See, this is another method, continuous irrigation system without, without antibiotics. However, as the device is not placed in a so long-term successful, is limited and questionable. Alternatively, debridement, capsulectomy, locus, again, rhomboid skin flap closure are also known. It is up to the plastic surgeon to decide, but I find muscle flaps as good. Important advantages of turnover, the device is given muscle flaps, which will deliver antibiotics, help eradicate the cell base. Procedure is done in extending the previous incision of the implant. The procedure helps cell base costly implant. Now, under the incision rests the healthy muscle, under which is the implant. So, in case there is a suture line breakdown, the implant is not exposed. There is a thick muscle in between implant and the skin. Conclusion in the treatment of any infected, if exploitation is of an exposed implant is not possible or not desired, there is a wide spectrum of treatment options and reconstructive choices, choices with common principle of aggressive debridement, obliteration of dead space, and coverage with a health, healthy, well vascularized tissue such as muscle flap. Method of salvage should be individualized as per the clinical situation. Salvage of cardiac devices with turnover muscle flap is technically feasible approach with favorable outcomes and low morbidity. Mark Next slide, please. You can now appreciate how I have done. I have extended it to medially and then. It, these are all customized uh, incisions, depending on where they have put. This has been accepted and published in International uh, Journal of Cardio. Both of my papers, these have been accepted. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you very much, sir. The wonderful uh, practical uh, experience you have shared. So uh, very few people will deal these exposed uh, cardiac uh, uh, devices, uh, uh, reconstructing, covering the with the uh, uh, peck major uh, flap. Um, in uh, first uh, uh, lecture. Uh, you have shown the uh, various uh, practical experience of uh, covering uh, uh, sacral pressure shore with uh, the 
various variety of uh, limburg flap sir uh, uh, you prefer to do limburg flap whatever may be the uh, size and the shape of the sacral pressure sir sir <coughs> So, uh, will you do this uh, 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 flap uh, for uh, the patients uh, who uh, has a good prognosis of uh, recovery or uh, uh, okay. even uh, poor prognosis of recovery? Any type of uh, uh, patient you prefer to do this? Sir? If it is a superficial and patient is going to work within three months, I think a uh, simple graph could also do. Hello? Oh, yeah, that, that principle of flap, uh, it doesn't matter whether you do rotation flap or limbal flap or skin grafting. If the patient is going to recover within, say, three months, uh, even primary suturing or uh, if it is suturable or even grafting would do, but I am very happy with the limbal flap as it doesn't cause any more weight. Basically, it is a skin flap. Yes, sir. It, uh, uh, results are very good, uh, what you have shown in your experience. Uh, Dr. Sandeep, would you like to add, like, ask any questions? Uh, good evening, sir. But yes, it is fantastic. Both the lectures are fantastic and it's very practical, very useful for everyone. A uh, couple of questions that um, uh, uh, regarding your sternal uh, defect, because that is one common thing that uh, we face also. And uh, uh, yeah, how would you actually, I mean, do you do any special investigations to uh, check out for uh, the osteomyelitic part? Uh, to see whether there's osteomyelitis yeah. in slightly off uh, the regular areas yeah. because many a times we have actually encountered uh, conditions where we are actually seeing uh, distant ribs also getting osteomyelitic and uh, that is one question sir and then second thing is that after your uh, debrima do you immediately do the flap or do you put a vac and wait for that uh, wounds to be stable and uh, uh, free of infection before you put the uh, flaps? I'll answer both the questions. One, I never do the debridement at home. I always do it with a cardiothoracic surgeon. Because in theatrogenic problems, I have made a rule that whatever is the brand, then brand person should be there. One. Secondly, before debridement, we do HRTP forex. So then we the idea of the infection is there. And we debride. And uh, immediate cover, uh, no bad nothing. After deployment, proper wash, immediate cover with a muscle. Thank you, sir. Dr. Bhattacharya, sir, kindly share your experience and uh, put your uh, inputs and comments, yeah. sir. Okay, so. Uh, as far as sacral uh, sore is concerned, uh, the Limburg flap 1, 2, 3, the, all the variations which Dr. Bhatia has uh, shown are very interesting. But uh, sacral flap being the sacral defect being the central defect, it is in the central part, there are various options. And I think it is the individual choice of the surgeon and, and depending upon the size of the defect, and the site of the defect, but it is a central defect, so you can have so many flaps you can design. And of course, this is his experience with the Limburg flap, which he has shared, and we have we are enriched with uh, your experience. As far as the external defect is concerned, uh, I have a long experience of uh, these defects. As he has correctly said, the debridement should always be done with the cardiothoracic paper, and uh, then. Uh, they are satisfied, we are satisfied. 
that yes, everything is debrided. Because whenever, if you do any reconstructive procedure, leaving behind uh, necrosed, uh, devitalized tissue, that will lead to problems certainly. But what I want to emphasize is that uh, whether it is a upper third, middle third, or lower third sternal defect, most of the time I use bilateral adipofacial turnover flap. I keep the muscle flap as a you know uh, as a, in my store that if the adipofacial is not able to come to the central point, both the flaps and suture nicely, then only I will use the muscle flap, the pec major muscle flap. Because when we are uh, hinging or turning over the adiofacial flap, the most important thing is that the cardiothoracic surgeon, they split the sternum in the center. So both the adiofacial tissue muscles are usually quite well preserved. And then uh, when we excise the whole length of the defect for debridement, etc. So then we have access to the adjacent tissue towards the breast. And you can have adequate amount of adipofacial flap for turning over because it has a wide base. It's not a narrow base. So whole of the length of the defect is your base. And then when you turn over, your chance of necrosis of adipofacial flap is very less. And therefore, adipofacial flap, which uses part of the flap uh, adipose tissue from the medial side of breast also, obviously. So that usually comes and I prefer most of the time I am able to cover the sternal defect of any dimension with adipofacial flap. However, in some occasions I have used the muscle flap as a secondary procedure. If the adipofacial doesn't come, then only. I am comfortable with adipofacial, but I know that I have uh, pec major also with me. So I'm free to use it. So my first choice is adipofacial flap and then the muscle flap. Sir, in uh, adipofacial flap, how much laterally you will go to turn uh, it over onto the defect? See, from the uh, middle of the sternum where the defect is, so you feel the lateral yeah. border of sternum. From there, you leave about two centimeter and then you plan according to the defects because you are hinging from both sides. So half of the uh, defect width will be covered by one flap and the other by the other flap. So both bilateral flaps are used because you have bilateral incision. So you have good access, you have to just undermine it, the skin, which is uh, very easy because you have a long incision for debridement, etc. The sternum is open. And then you, you decide where to incise, leaving behind two centimeters from the lateral border of the sternum as the pedicle. And then you calculate, you have to also calculate the turnover part. So about leave about one centimeter yes. for turning the flap, for hinging the flap. And then it comes easily. There's no problem at all. I always, uh, my first choice is adiofacial flap irrespective of the site of the sternal defect. <clears throat> but he has nicely so, demonstrated uh, the use of muscle flap. Yes, major. yes. Certainly. Certainly. Uh, even I so, heard uh, uh, most of the people, uh, they do uh, for double breasting of the turnover uh, pec major flap. Uh, Edipofacial flap is... Uh, the first time or, uh, I'm hearing, sir, your experience. That's why I asked you. Next time, next time you use it, you'll be very happy, I think. And it is much simpler, yes, procedure, much faster procedure. Less morbidity, sir, less. Of things, sir. Yes, sir. Couple yes, of things, sir. Yes, Sandeep. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. From uh, like we, uh, because our uh, uh, center is one of uh, quite a big. Uh, cardiac surgery center as well as we get a lot of patients from Kerala mm -hmm. also different parts of Kerala and South India with sternal issues. Uh, so we tend to get I think more complex kind of uh, problems where already the sternum would be literally completely uh, eaten away by the osteomyelitis. So one thing that I was actually we were using uh, pec major very consistently mm -hmm. in our earlier days but then 
few patients we have all we have found that there is actually a space between the sternum uh, under uh, sorry uh, between the lower uh, part of the pectoralis major that we have actually kept over the wound and there is actually a small space over there so this is something which slowly we found that again some uh, collection could be there and then some infection was there and we were having some issues with the pectoralis major when we were using it alone so uh, one thing uh, uh, we started doing is like last i think almost 40 odd cases we have actually been using in all cases we are actually taking the omentum so omentum uh, one uh, yeah, the first case I, i think first one or two cases we are taken subcutaneously but they tend to have a bad uh, uh, herniation but nowadays we are taking it through the uh, diaphragm so once we started taking through the diaphragm we have actually got rid of that uh, hernia problem and uh, the good thing about omentum is that all the crevices all the small Uh, say for example if one track is there going through the uh, the the say c6 rib it is actually uh, eating into the c6 or c5 rib which is going laterally we can actually put one small bit of the omentum into each of these small pockets and uh, initially we were a bit skeptical thinking that it is actually you're opening up a, uh, a, a totally normal uh, abdomen and taking a omentum over there but uh, uh, reading many articles and all we got more confidence and that we started doing and uh, we have never had your voice is not audible sandeep oh i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i was speaking so much time with <laughs> my no no my no no. So no no it is few few seconds back only Oh, okay 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 i think i'm just keeping it on my lap and speaking yeah so uh, so uh, omentum in our hands i feel is a very good flap for actually the sternal wounds like what we are doing now is that we put the omentum and on top of that we advance a uh, pectoralis uh, major and then so we have something like a layer of omentum a layer of pectoralis major yeah and then the skin on top of it so that is what we are doing now for almost all the cases except for the upper uh, upper third sternal defects there we are using only the pectoralis major and uh, one important diagnostics tool that we got uh, we, we 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 are using now consistently is to go for a regional fdg pet a regional pet scan where only the sternum is looked into uh, at least i think of the uh, uh, 30 or 40 cases where we have used the regional fdg pet we have got uh, six cases where the uh, infection the infection was in slightly distant areas so then we were curious we opened up and then we got to see that there is actually uh, osteomyelitic uh, region uh, one patch over there so this is something that we found very interesting because our nuclear medicine team was also very supportive and then uh, we found that it is very very useful and in case it is a long standing one people have come travel from gone and uh, maybe 3 uh, months 4 months it's a chronic uh, uh, sternal infection no? so then we are using this ftg pet not for the regular ones which has happened maybe 2 uh, weeks 3 weeks down the line so the, these are two things that i just thought i will share with all of you sir very nice sir so you are uh, filling the cavity with the omentum and uh, advancing the muscle over that also. oh over over that over that yes double cover yeah so dr so umar that, 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 so, so many times you no know, we don't uh, sometimes we have to actually separate the muscle totally sometimes we don't separate the muscle totally we are still able to get the muscle into the midline by just going under the pectoralis major it was a very nice presentation yeah. yes a lot of learning experience we learned a lot we have not much experience with the sternal wounds so we are being called on and off by the cardiology people but i can say that whenever such a wound is there it is a very stubborn wound it doesn't heal very nicely maybe the pressure source maybe the wound <clears throat> 
of the question of those, it is a good learning that Dr. Bhatia is doing the Limburg lab. That is good. Mostly for the sacral, we do the bilateral advancements. Mostly we do for sacral. It is because as Dr. Bhattacharya said, it is a central thing. So you can advance muscle, musculocutaneous gluteus from the either side. And it also gives a good result. And now we will also now start using the Limburg flaps. <clears throat> that is a, what we learned today. And I have seen mostly these <clears throat> bad sores, if they are small, we have started using lately what is called a key school flaps. After the accident, they also give, they also give very good results. Not much now, we have started. It has been very good. Result. Umar, your voice is breaking. Your voice is interrupted. Maybe there is some network. Maybe there is somebody is speaking in between. Somebody is speaking Umar. in between. Dr. Umar, I think somebody is... your voice yeah, yeah. is interrupted. I think somebody is speaking that no, way. That, yeah, that, that is muted. That is muted. Now, now it is muted. Muted. Okay. It is still interrupting. No, it's no, okay. no, no, now it's okay. Good. It's no, no, okay. Thing that mostly for the sacral sores, we use the bilateral advancement, musculoskeletal mm -hmm. advancements. Those give very good results for us. And lately, we have used started using the keystone flaps. For the same, we use it to do the V adjustment for the ischial sores or the like that. But lately, we have started now using the keystone flaps, and we have two three cases we did, and we had a very good results. And they are very easy, and the expenditure of the tissues is very less. What we have found that is regarding this. Still, it was a very nice presentation. A lot of learning, a lot good thing about the pact major. Dr. Bart is doing a lot. That is very nice. So uh, all of uh, all your opinion, if the patient is uh, paralyzed and there are no signs of uh, recovery. So what is what are your choices? Please put your opinion all of you. Basically, the problem with that is that we don't prefer. Strictly, frankly speaking, we don't prefer when there is no outcome like that. Patient cannot be mobilized. There are big pressure sores and compliance is very poor. When patient is deteriorating. So, so mostly we prefer you the prefer to dressings and wax. Can that's all we have done we have done in such patients also who have not improved but with the support of that they can walk on some sub with some support or like that we have used flaps for them but frankly speaking the patient who is again bedridden who has no nobody to see who is deteriorating who has complaints is very poor the again the flap will go to the waste because we have seen recurrence also. If you have utilized one flap, that is why you have to spare as much of the normal tissue as possible. Because you have to be ready for the second flap. It is one of the principles like everybody is knowing. So we have to be ready for the second flap, which you have to do in the coming time for the same. That's why confidence is to be needed for such patients. But yes, sir, that your uh, the way you have explained it, no, it was really enlightening. The the height, the width. I really had not thought about actually uh, getting two rhomboids of unequal sizes. The way you have actually studied this particular topic is phenomenal, sir. It is excellent. I think it is uh, very nice and very very enlightening to see that you know, so much of thought you have actually put it in 
put into this particular uh, uh, paper that you have actually uh, uh, I, have you published it sir yeah it has been published it has been published okay. yes. i missed we'll it a lot today so we were knowing uh, but was... limburg like this a smaller flap a bigger one like that it was really really yeah. what you said phenomenal really ideas coming sir, to your mind <laughs> sir, again, another question, sir. So, you would be using similar flaps for uh, pilonidal sinus also, no, sir? 100%. Pilonidal sinus treated by only limbus flap. So, the other flap is, yes, sir. I'm not very much convinced. It is by some Russian uh, in which they mobilize the subcutaneous tissue more on one side and less on another side. But I'm not convinced. Yeah. I think pilonidal won't give it. Uh, one question, sir, yeah, is unrelated, but then I'm just asking you one more question, sir. Sometimes we find that the pineal sinus, no, some of the sinus tracts would be almost coming up to the anal verge. So in that that area where the limburg might not reach, do you put some Z-plasties or something like that over there? Oh, uh, see, uh, limburg is not Thank you, sir. Dr. Lakshmi? Uh, yeah, Sandeep. That's uh, a very interesting no session we had. Uh, Hello? Uh, today was actually a bit uh, problematic day logistically. What happened was that Dr. Sharika, who was our resident, was supposed to be presenting a, yeah. a paper today. But unfortunately, yesterday she lost her uncle. And then she had to yeah. rush back to, to her native place to enter. And then she had told uh, Dr. Sam to look after her, And then Sam used to look after it also occasionally. But then what happened is that last night, Sam was also down with fever. So today morning, he called me that, sir, I'm yeah. very sick. I'm having severe body pain. and likely covid and things like that. so then sanju has taken over so <laughs> that, is, that is why some delays and all were there in the uh, no, in the, no. in the restaurant covid is coming now like anything yes we have three of the friends already at home many faculty members it is coming like again yeah, but yeah, this yeah, milder yeah. form correct but it's coming many people many are uh, becoming positive <laughs>